Madam President, um, President Trump and the Republican leadership is on television every day telling the American people how this tax bill is going to help the middle class, how it was written for the middle class. Unfortunately, uh, I will not shock too many people by suggesting that what President Trump is saying is not truthful. Uh, this legislation, according to independent studies, will provide 60% of the benefits to the top 1%. So we are living in a moment in American history where we have massive levels of income and wealth inequality, where the top one-tenth of 1% 1 now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%, where three people, three wealthiest people in this country own more wealth than the bottom half of the American population, and yet my Republican colleagues believe that this is a moment in which 60 percent of the benefits of the so-called tax reform bill should go to the 1 percent. Meanwhile, Millions of middle-class families will end up paying more in taxes. So we have a situation where the wealthy who need tax breaks the least will benefit the most, and many millions of struggling working-class and middle-class families will end up paying more in taxes at the end of 10 years. Madam President, the President of the United States and my Republican colleagues tell the American people that trickle-down economics, giving huge tax breaks to the wealthy and large corporation, will expand the economy, will create new jobs, and will pay for the deficit that this legislation brings about. And the simple truth is that trickle-down economics is a fraudulent theory. It has failed miserably in Kansas, where it has been most recently put into effect. It failed under the Reagan administration, and it failed under the administration of George W. Bush. But what interests me the most, Madam President, is that my Republican colleagues will not tell the American people how they are going to be paying for the $1.4 trillion increase in deficits that this bill creates. You got a $1.4 trillion increase in deficits. How is that going to be paid for? And my view is, without doubt, that as soon as this legislation is passed, the Republicans will come back and they'll suddenly rediscover their religion about deficits, and they will go before the American people saying, we need, quote, unquote, entitlement reform, or we need welfare reform. So let me translate for you what entitlement reform means. It means that when millions of older workers have nothing in the bank saved up for retirement, they're going to propose massive cuts to Social Security. Now, we don't know exactly the form that it will take. Maybe they'll want to raise the retirement age, forcing older workers to work more before they can get their Social Security benefits. Maybe they will cut back on cost of living increases through a so-called chained CPI, which means lower benefits. They're going to go after Medicare. Maybe their idea will be to privatize Medicare, convert it into a voucher program, and say to older Americans, here's a check for $8,000. You go out and find the private insurance that you 
can, and good luck to you if you're dealing with heart disease or cancer with your $8,000 check. And they will no doubt come back to slash Medicaid. Now, these are not just wild ideas that I have been thinking about. This is pretty much what was in the budget the Republicans voted for right here on the floor of the Senate. They have already voted for a trillion dollar cut over a 10 year period to Medicaid. And that means massive reductions in help, not only for lower income Americans, not only for children, but for people in nursing homes. They have already voted in the budget over a 10 year period to cut Medicare by $470 billion. And in the House, they are working hard to figure out ways to cut Social Security. And the Republicans will also make massive cuts to education, to nutrition, to environmental protection. The other day, I sent a letter to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and to the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan. And what I asked of them was to be honest with the American people. And this is what I said, Mr. President, and I ask that this letter be put into the congressional record. Without objection. Thank you. And this is what I asked. I said that, quote, I am very concerned that if you succeed in passing tax legislation that significantly adds to our national debt, you will then move aggressively to balance the budget on the backs of working families, the elderly, the children, the sick, and the poor. In other words, in order to pay for tax breaks for the rich and large corporations, you will make massive cuts to Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, nutrition, environmental protection, and every other program designed to protect the needs of the middle class and working families of our country. Before the Senate votes on tax legislation that adds over $1.4 trillion to the deficit, and this is what I wrote to the majority leader, you owe the American people a specific and detailed explanation as to how the Republican Congress will achieve its commitment of balancing the budget over the next decade. Will you schedule a vote to raise the eligibility age of Medicare from 65 to 67, as called for in the House budget resolution? Will you attempt to end Medicare as we know it, by giving seniors vouchers to purchase private health insurance, something long supported by Speaker Ryan. How much will you cut Social Security? Will you try to increase the retirement age to 70, cut cost of living adjustments for senior citizens and disabled veterans, and or privatize Social Security? Will you support legislation to cut Medicaid by a trillion dollars over the next decade, kicking 15 million Americans off of health insurance. As you know, this was a provision included in the Republican budget resolution that was passed earlier this year. How much do you plan on cutting affordable housing, Pell Grants, WIC, and Head Start to pay for a permanent tax break for profitable corporations? End of quote. Now that is what I wrote to the majority leader. And my challenge right now to my Republican colleagues is I ask you, come down to the floor of the Senate and tell me that I am wrong. Come down here and tell the American people that if this legislation, this disastrous tax bill passes, that you will not be coming back to cut Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, nutrition, education, and other programs. Maybe I am wrong. And if Republicans come down here and they say, Bernie, you're wrong. We have no intention 
of cutting Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, I will come here, Mr. President, and I will apologize. So my challenge right now to my Republican colleagues, come down here, tell me, tell the American people that I am wrong, tell us all that you're not going to cut Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and education in order to deal with the $1.4 trillion deficit that you bring about in this disastrous tax bill. Tell the American people that you're not going to cut programs that the elderly, the children, the sick, and the poor desperately need in order to give huge tax breaks to the wealthy and large corporations. That is my challenge. And I will be listening eagerly to see if there are any Republicans who are going to come down and tell me that what I'm suggesting is wrong. And with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.